So I think it would be a mistake for the uh, DA to go into a coalition with the ANC. But yeah, I mean, uh, stranger things have happened. And, you know, from uh, what I've heard, uh, there have been some talks in the past between the ANC and DA between fairly senior members uh, of both parties. So I don't think it's something you can dismiss completely out of hand. The possibility of a so-called grand coalition between the African National Congress and the Democratic Alliance has gained a bit of traction in recent weeks in opinion pieces and analysis from various organizations. Related to that, we now have firm information on the new multi-party charter for South Africa, signed by at least seven parties up to this point, with the possibility that the invitations will be extended to other parties to join. Joining me to unpack these issues is Maurice Ritt from the Institute of Race Relations. Maurice, thanks once again for your time with us at the CRA this week. Just to start off with a little bit, this idea of a grand coalition between the ANC and the DA, uh, all of us wondering and trying to speculate on how things are going to shake out in the elections next year. The possibility itself might be very remote in your view, maybe 1% on the sort of spectrum uh, at this point in time, but I don't think we can uh, discount it necessarily. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's unlikely, but it's not impossible. Uh, I think uh, I might have mentioned it before that I still don't think it's impossible that the ANC could win a slim majority of getting just above 50%. And if they don't, uh, they, they're probably not going to miss a majority by a significant margin. You know, I think it's unlikely that they're going to win and you say, you know, low 40s or high 30s of the votes. If they are under 50%, I can see that, you know, it would probably be 47, 48%, somewhere around there. And that I need one of the smaller parties to uh, just get them over the line. So a party like Good or Al Jamaa or even the IFP, who's uh, a member of the multi-charter, multi-party charter, multi-party charter, but they have worked with the ANC before, including in national governments. So I don't think it's something that can be discounted uh, immediately. But it seems that there <clears throat> is some uh, appetite for this, including from the ANC, which is quite interesting. We've had some fairly senior people in the ANC say they'd rather work with the DA than the EFF. Uh, maybe not so much at national level, but uh, at local government level, uh, you know, saying things like, we know that they're good at service delivery, but, uh, you know, I think it was Kluki Zikalala, who's the head of the Veterans League, saying, you know, we know that they're good at providing services, but they're against things like uh, transformation and, you know, the party is racist, so we can't work with them for those reasons, but perhaps we have to look for ways to work together and also, Fakila Mbalula has also said that the ANC should look to work with the DA, rather. A senior member of the ANC, Ekurileni, also said that the party's partnership with the EFF wasn't working, <clears throat> as did, uh, um, I think, was the spokesperson for the ANC Youth League. So it seems a lot of people, uh, senior people in the ANC, seem to be warming to uh, an idea of the ANC DA coalition. I just don't think it will be necessary at national level yet. Uh, in other provinces or in um, in Gauteng and KwaZulu Natal might be a possibility. Uh, but I do think an ANC DA coalition would be a bad idea for the DA. I don't think uh, the ANC will give the DA any uh, pro important cabinet post. You know, I don't think the DA would be, say, given finance or the Department of Public Enterprises or anything like that. And uh, I doubt that the ANC would uh, be willing to implement any kind of, a, kind of reforms that the DA would want, you know, around the economy, or pushing, uh, going back on policies such as BE or NHR or other um, policies that aren't really government policies or will not exist, things like cater deployment. So uh, I think it would be probably a mistake for the DA uh, because the ANC is probably still going to be in charge in some form until 2029. And even if it's not with the EFF, I think we're just going to see the kind of same trends we've been seeing since you know early 2010s, unfortunately. There's going to be no real economic reform or anything like that. And we're just going to carry on the path we've been going on. And if the DA is in coalition with the ANC, uh, voters, I think, will blame the DA as much as they blame the ANC. And this has happened to, I mean, across the world, this often happens to junior parties and coalitions. Uh, a, a, an example I like to use is the one of the Tories and the Lib Dems in the UK. In uh, 2010, the Tories didn't uh, manage to win a, a majority in Westminster. The Lib Dems joined, uh, went into coalition with them. Uh, and the Lib Dems had to uh, go back on quite a few of their, or the nation, a couple of their, or quite a few of their uh, uh, promises they'd made to the electorate. And by, when, when 2015 came around, the next election, the Lib Dems went from, I think it was 57 seats in Westminster 
to uh, six or seven, and they still haven't really recovered. They've only got they hold eleven or twelve seats in Westminster now. So yeah, so the Lib, Lib Dems were kind of um, they were shackled. They couldn't really do what they wanted, and a lot of the problems that happened under the Tory government, a lot of people blamed the Lib Dems as much as the, as the Tories would. So I think it would be a mistake for the uh, DA to go into a coalition with the ANC. But yeah, I mean, uh, strange things have happened, and. You know, from uh, what I've heard, uh, there have been some talks in the past between the ANC and DA, between fairly senior members uh, of both parties. So I don't think it's something you can dismiss completely out of hand. Although I do still think it's unlikely. Marius, shifting a little bit to a different kind of coalition. So in recent weeks, we had this agreement now um, between seven parties who, who came together at a meeting, including parties like the Democratic Alliance, the Encarta Freedom Party, the Freedom Front Plus, Action SA and a few other smaller ones coming together and forming now what they've called the multi-party charter for South Africa. Your impressions of the charter, of the agreement, if you want to highlight any particular items maybe that, that you stood out in terms of the sort of documents and the declaration, as it were, what this charter is committed to. Um, there is, of course, the possibility that they'll extend invitations to other parties. I think, I'm speaking under correction, but the, the sort of idea of working with the EFF and ANC, they've ruled that out categorically as part of the requirements of the charter. But anything, what do you think about this sort of idea and it's and it's maybe it's viability? Yeah, I mean, I think it's quite a good idea. It's something uh, new in South African politics. We've had come, these kind of opposition uh, coalitions or pacts come before, but they haven't really gone anywhere. There was the Coalition for Change, I think it was called, in 2004 between the DA and the IFP, which didn't really go anywhere, but then the context and environment is, of course, very different. You know, the ANC was really the juggernaut. The economy was booming, things were going right. And the DA, you know, didn't govern. Uh, um, uh, I think it had lost um, uh, Cape Town uh, at that stage. It didn't govern the Western Cape. The IFP was on a, on a downwards trend instead of the upwards trend that we're seeing now at the moment. So I think the context is a bit different. And uh, I think what's good with this chart is that they have set out kind of ground rules of how the party is going to work together. You know, what, if they had to come into government, what, uh, how it would function, uh, you, you know, how the kind of portfolios would be divided and so on. And there have been some interesting things when, when <clears throat> sort of on ideological terms, what they said they stand for. A lot of it is kind of boilerplate. You know, we want good economic growth. We want, you know, uh, all South Africans to feel welcome or whatever it is. But some of the stuff I thought was quite interesting, talking about devolving uh, government power to, uh, you know, the lowest possible level of government. Uh, I can't remember the, the exact uh, text, but it was something like that, which I think is quite interesting. And I think the, uh, plays into the kind of devolution, devolution issues, which the DA and the IFP and the, uh, and the Freedom Front Plus were all pretty keen on. So I think that was quite interesting. And that is uh, making it clear that they, uh, in, in some ways, that they ideologically quite different from the ANC and the EFF. And it's also interesting that they said they're not going to uh, categorically not work with the ANC uh, or, or the EFF, which I think, I mean, it's probably what you've got to do. You've got to make sure that uh, voters who don't want those parties in power know that you're not going to work with them. But uh, as the electoral math stands at the moment, I think uh, any coalition with uh, any anti-ANC coalition, which wants even a sniff of the uh, um, majority of 50% plus one, would have to include the EFF. Uh, you know, I don't see... It's just the hot stands at the moment, unless we see a massive collapse in ANC support, which goes to the DA or Action SA or whatever the case is, which I don't really foresee. Even in provinces where the ANC is probably going to lose power next year, uh, in Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal, even in those provinces, you're probably going to need the EFF to be part of an anti-ANC coalition. In both Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal, the parties that make up this uh, multi-charter, multi-party charter, Together, they come to about 30 to 35 percent of the vote. I get Nkhateng and KwaZulu Natal was obviously 2019. This was before Action SA existed. And Action SA did pretty well in uh, Khateng in uh, local county elections. So, you know, that can change electoral maps a bit. And it looks like Action SA does take votes away from the ANC as well. So, you know, I think that does change the dynamic a bit. But still, I don't, you know, I, I don't see these parties getting 50 percent uh, in. Um, any of the provinces, but I mean, I could be wrong. According to DA polling, apparently the multi-party charter parties together have about uh, have nearly 40, 48% of the votes in Gauteng, according to some polling. So it's not impossible, but I think it's going to be a hard slog. And I think, you know, this is actually just laying the foundation and the groundwork for 
uh, post ANC government in 2029, I think. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see uh, the ANC out of power in 2024, maybe in Gauteng and KwaZulu Natal. But even then, I think it's probably a 50 50 chance. Thank you very much for watching. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And a reminder, please, before you leave, to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you have not yet done so. Until next time, this has been Chris Hutton for the Center for Risk Analysis. Take care.